Hey, y'all. My name's Amanda. I am a very small, very new reseller, very new to YouTube, very new all around. Because there's a lot of you out there that are similar to me or in my boat somewhere in that boat, I created this YouTube channel to share my reseller journey as I grow my eBay business and make my dreams a reality. My intention is to do my best to create content that people will enjoy and want to watch, possibly learn something, or at the very least, we can look at and discuss some really cool stuff. I'd like to create a channel that invites you to come along with me on this journey, possibly to give some of you out there who've been thinking about starting a YouTube channel or reselling, possibly a little bit of inspiration. So I suppose I'd like to start with explaining why I'm not creating your typical shop along videos, visiting the Goodwills or estate sales, garage sales, all those kinds of things. So I'd like to go over some of that while I pick out a few things to get cleaned up and photos taken and then listed on eBay. Okay, so I thought that this would be maybe a good time to show you around the shop a little bit. Uh, I'll do my best not to make you dizzy. Let's see, this is a fairly large assortment of artwork. There's everything there from prints and paintings and drawings and uh, antique ones, vintage ones. I have a lot of frames, this cool frame here. He has a part right here that was broken off, but I think otherwise he was in really good condition still. Still has the uh, glass in there. So I have yet to sell any art on eBay. I'm kind of nervous about doing it. I do have some pretty large pieces that they're going to be a lot to ship, unfortunately, especially right now. So that's part of my hesitancy is the shipping of them. I've got some antique uh, 1800s drawings and paintings that are, they're signed by the artist, but I have trouble making out the signature. I'm not sure that they're an artist of significant value, but they're good pieces of art. And I have no idea where or how how to list them, where on the price scale and, and kind of how to gauge that because they're one-offs. Those kinds of things I feel like are probably best put to auction, but it's like I've talked about in my previous videos, I'm a little nervous to do that because I, I don't know that putting it to auction on eBay is going to result in a very good outcome. Over here is my photography booth area. Uh, we kind of have this little nook between uh, this piece that sticks out here. And so I just kind of put a shelf up. I have a old closet rod in there, wood round closet rod. And I've just attached my backdrop paper there. And because I have yet to spend money on fancier light fixtures, I bought both of these for, I don't know, $10 a piece, I think at Walmart, and created a light filter for it just by getting these like styrofoam board pieces and then cutting them out and putting wax paper on the sides so that it, it kind of mutes the light a little bit, dulls it slightly. This here is a tiny little check 
porcelain piece. Let's see if I can get it to show you on here. One tenth of a liter, I suppose it says. Union K, Czechoslovakia. Man, I can't say that today. But it's just one of your um, fairly common porcelain lusterware pieces, sort of with this geometric, like uh, Art Deco sort of style with it. And it's one of these mini pitchers or creamers. So I'm going to be getting photos of that here shortly and getting that listed on eBay. That guy right there, well, I fell in love with him and he hangs on my wall until someday I sell him. Right here is just kind of my little side table where I keep my props for photography. Things that I use uh, to stand things up or, you know, display them nicely. These are some other pieces that I'm going to be getting listed. This is a 1970s, I believe. I think I wrote it out on here. 1976 Santa Pez dispenser. And I forgot all about him. I came across him the other day and I thought, oh, well, this is a great time of year to get him online. So I'm going to do that. These are a bunch of swizzle sticks here and, you know, just vintage little swizzle sticks. A lot of the bars and hotels and things like that, like Vegas ones that aren't there anymore. I have no idea what they'll sell for. I don't think there's any super rare ones or anything like that in there, but nonetheless, people collect those. So uh, these pieces here are just cute. They're little like hand sewn pieces for patches or you know, whatever, crafts, that kind of thing. They came, I think, in a sewing kit that I got at an auction, a state sale auction. This is the vast majority of glass that I currently have. Let's see if I can show you way up there. Uh, I got quite a bit of milk glass. There's some Fenton back there. And that big glowing piece there, like a big optic bowl, Ellie Smith in the back. These little bottles here, there's three that are, you know, a set. And they are like wheel grinded or, I mean, they got that gray toned like uh, etching to them and I'm just not sure, you know, they're ground in here. They have their, as far as I know, original uh, stoppers here, but they're not signed anywhere. I believe they're machine made, although they have no seams on them, but I have no idea on those how old they truly are, if they're just meant to look really antique or or what but um, I think this yellow one here is probably Czech and just I don't know some different odd pieces this one here is kind of different it's sort of swung like style it's got like that uh, oh, gold gilt on here and the bottom of it goes down there but again, no sign, no mark, no nothing. Got some bells, like this cool air twist on this bell. I don't know who made that one. A lot of these pieces, I'm still trying to figure out who made them. You'll see I've got a lot of bubble wrap and painter's tape. That's the only thing I use on, on pieces if, if they need any tape. But my shop is in my basement and I don't like spiders. So a lot of pieces I have taped over, put, you know, like plastic over. One, it keeps the dust out. I mean, look at that, right? So it keeps the dust out of them, but it also keeps the bugs out of them. So this guy here, I think he's German. Uh, he's that real thin, real dainty glass. He's got the aventurine on him here. I mean, I love him. He's really, really neat. But I haven't been able to find one just like him. The only downside on him, let me flip him the other way here, is right here. He has, 
I don't, I don't want to say it's broken, but it's definitely, uh, I don't know. It's got like, to some degree, some, some cracking maybe, but you can't feel it on there. So I don't know. It's kind of more on the inside of it, but it's still, I don't like it. But I mean, just look how delicate, how little his beak and stuff is. I'm not sure if he's German or, or what, but, um, and of course got a little more Fenton in there. I've got a couple of the, uh, hens on a nest in here and they're in their original boxes. They're in perfect condition. Down here is more of my different tableware pieces, serving pieces. I got depression glass. I got the Moroccan amethyst. This whole thing is a huge thing of candle wick that I got for, I think total it was 10 or $20 at the thrift store quite a while ago. Uh, there's some really cool smoky glass back there. And no, that chicken nest base doesn't go with him. I wish he did. They came together at an estate auction, but they do not actually match up. And then I got some moonstone in here. Down here is more like cooking and baking. So all the different, you know, Fire King. Uh, I got some of the Fire King Philby different Pyrex pieces. Uh, this big adding machine, it came from my mom's uncle or great uncle. I don't remember which. And there's some of the original paper that went with it. He's pretty neat. I don't have the uh, key that goes to him. So I had come across a listing on Facebook Marketplace for all of this original sculpture artwork. And this piece here was one of them. And it does have some Japanese uh, inscription on the back. I have no clue what it says, but the lady that I bought them from was moving back to Japan and she actually was a professor at Kansas uh, University, professor of art, and had studied under some pretty well-known individuals. And maybe sometime I will make a video and kind of show that. it's rather impressive and I'll show you some of the other pieces I got that uh that I got from her this here this owl he's maybe a foot and a half or so tall maybe slightly more and he's a not I don't think he's Holland mold but he's something like that so he was a, a home project home home painted piece but he's he's great they did a great job on him and these lamps, I'm not sure who makes those, but I got those at an estate sale for 10 bucks, I think. I think it was the last day of the sale and they just wanted them to go, so I took them. Let me climb up my ladder here. This is a stained glass piece that I have removed the cord from, but it still has it's hanging chain here. Uh, this is a little Coca-Cola bulb. It's vintage at best, retro vintage, I think. It was from the 90s or so. Um, this is a hand-painted piece. It has, let's see if I can turn that a little bit, some of this ivy on it that's hand-painted. And this is all a milk glass. Uh, this I thought was just gorgeous. Um, this is not hand painting on it. It is uh, like a transfer print, but these little dots on here are. They're kind of like a, what would you call it? Like a Moriage almost. This big drip glaze guy. I'm not sure which company made him. Uh, this kind of teal aqua lamp back here. I love, I got an old RCA one back there. I think that RCA one was made in the 80s or so back here. From what I've looked and found so far, I, I've been finding that these white, uh, what do you call them, hurricane lamps, that they are Fenton. I don't know for sure if they are or not. I know that the lamps themselves, the actual electrical part, 
on the base or, or so they look more 80s 90s or so so i'm not sure this guy here is kind of neat uh he is a little dusty but he is from the 40s and he's just a real cool real cool piece so this guy here this is all majolica so it's like a bundle of bananas that forms a bowl he's italian uh he is vintage i don't think he's antique but he is in spectacular shape no cracks no chips he has maybe some very slight crazing to him but other than that he is gorgeous he weighs a little bit uh, but more importantly his size his height is probably a foot and a half and his width is at least a foot so he's another one that's just going to be very difficult to ship for that reason there's my royal hager i think it was royal hager or hager uh console swan vase and blue console matching bowl there and this guy he's another one from from an auction or so uh his pole sticks it sits somewhere on here i think i just set it down so that it wouldn't get broken off or something but these pieces here i'll have to do a video on they are scrimshaw i don't know that they're super old scrimshaw but i'm also not sure i can sell them I, there's certain laws on that and i'm not positive i know they're sold uh, like in Florida and stuff. So here's a look at some of my many planters. These are Czech wall pocket birds. And this guy here, I think he is, I, I want to say he's German. I want to say he's antique i'm not sure either way he's got his little bud vase on here or spillover vase but he's just so so extremely well done so highly detailed that i i, I would lay money that this is not a japan piece and i cannot for the life of me figure out that mark if anybody knows, that would be great. <laughs> I'd very much appreciate the help on identifying him because he is so gorgeous. I'd love to be able to list him, and I, I could with just what he is, with what I know, but I would love to be able to identify him, not just for value-wise, but just so I can put in the listing, you know, what the hell I'm selling. So, you know, he's, he's, he's gorgeous nonetheless. And then back here, that horse one is, I can't remember if that was California pottery, but he has kind of behind him uh, the planter portion. It's a fairly large size bowl. I uh, got quite a bit of, oh, Nippon, Czech, Germany, Bavaria. Uh, a lot of different kind of vases and stuff. Down here is more my Hull, Hager, all those kinds of pieces down here it's pretty obvious uh, i got a lot of lusterware um, some little play dish sets and stuff um, there's a cool lusterware cream or sugar right there those are in perfect condition these guys well the clock i got at a thrift store and it even has its key and it's vintage it's not super old, but uh, I'm not, I need to do a little more studying on the clock. I, I know who makes it, that's on the inside, but uh, as far as me feeling confident trying to wind it up <laughs> and verify that it works, well, I'm no clock expert and I'd almost rather sell it in an unknown status condition like a just found as is sort of thing versus me injure it somehow. 
This right here is an old, uh, who was it, Philco. He's got his Bakelite dial here. Still has his original little paper labels in here, or at least most of them, which I thought was too awesome. Um, I have taken the back off of him. And overall in there, it looked pretty good. I'm going to have to... figure that one out also. If my wish ever comes true, I will someday be able to meet Scott from the old curiosity shop. He has no clue who I am. Why would he? But I admire him and I love his channel. He is full of information and I think he would be a great person to ask about a couple of these things. So here's some more of the lamps. These are really cool. Uh, I'm not sure if these are California pottery pieces or, or what, but amazing nonetheless. And I got them for a few dollars at an estate auction. These green poppy glass ones back here, these are Fenton. Now Fenton made lamps that, and lamp shades and then they would customize lamps, you know, that you could order. You would look at the shade pieces and then be able to customize them. They did it for different businesses typically and, you know, your more high-end clients. And so I cannot find this exact lamp anywhere. And I know that's a Fenton piece, um, but I cannot find it. And then I've got a couple... I don't know how you say it, stifle or, or stifle lamps in the back there also. On the bottom down here, again, is uh, like serving pieces. There's some like casserole dishes, taurines. Uh, these are the uh, sort of Dorothy Thorpe style glasses there. This is a lot of cut glass and EAPG down here. Little stoneware. The next shelf has uh, some Coca-Cola glasses, just some, some other glassware and stuff in here. Yes, I do have that 80s country duck in the back there. Depression glass, party glasses, coin print glass, uh, coffee mugs. I believe these guys here are left in and based on that right there either left in or i don't know nippon possibly i'm not sure i cannot find these cups anywhere there's four total they each have a different dog on them and then there's one that has a flea bite i think it was on the rim of the cup so i think that's one where i'll still include it when i list it and just note that and kind of have it in there as uh, an extra or a piece for display, uh, something like that. Some different stoneware, McCoy. Um, this dragon looking guy in the back here. Uh, I'm assuming this is Japanese, possibly, but I'm not sure. And he's got his like mulberry on the back. He's glazed, 100% glazed on the inside and out. There's no markings on him. He's a little bit of a mystery. Um, I think these are German or Bavaria. I don't remember. I mean, either way, same thing, but some kind of artisan creamers. These are Otagari. And actually, I think I'm going to get those listed. Okay. So these are, uh, what would you call that? Not a lava glaze, but I mean, they're speckled stoneware. And then they have that OMC. You can barely see it on there, that OMC. Uh, sticker on the bottom of these the you can kind of see there that one still has a little bit of the yellow to it but all of them are in great shape and what do we got two four five of them I wish there were six but I'm not sure uh, that it came with six I'd imagine it did I don't know if you'd call those actually sake cups but they're like small handleless teacups anyway this chicken back here he's glazed except for the uh, head and his little waddle thing here. Those are cold painted. He's got no markings or anything. And I think he clearly was supposed to have a lid. 
And I, I, he didn't come with a lid for me, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure where his lid went, but sad to say. This one here is a, uh, I believe it was late 1800s, early 1900s. Uh, Remy, I think the name was on it. Um, this here, I've looked at it under a loop and maybe possibly the outline of it was transfer print or stencil, but you can definitely see the brush strokes on it when you look real close. You can also see this crazing on it. Outside of the crazing, it's in great shape. It's got a pewter lid. It's not inscribed or anything. So he's got crazing, but he's otherwise in great shape. I think we're doing that little one over there. Was this one? Yeah, this one here is Czech also. So this is obviously bigger. This is more of a, uh, I don't know, milk or, or water pitcher, small water pitcher maybe. Set him there. And then we had this guy here, and I think he's Japan. Hand-painted, made in Japan. And I don't remember who the H stands for on there, but very Art Deco-like luster wear. Really kind of a pretty piece. Um, it's bigger than this one. I can see him kind of for size reference, but not much, but a little bit. So we've got that guy, and then... I think I want to go ahead and get this one listed. This is probably one of the most beautiful pieces that I have in my pictures. Take that off the top there. Sometimes on my pieces, you know, I don't take the time to really fully clean them up and everything, but um, I will still tag them. Uh, Royal Wor Worcester, 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 I'm not sure, Porcelain Company, England, 1890, and I would have gotten that by looking up on the registration number and the mark on here. Now this one would be, sad to say, uh, just for decor, it does have a little flea bite chip there and probably slightly more than a flea bite on this side, but... You know, it was just, it's too beautiful. It's too beautiful. This is all uh, hand painted on here. So despite the chips, which is heartbreaking because I think it would sell for probably quite a bit more than what I'll wind up actually getting for it. But this is too pretty. You could still put, I don't know, an air plant in it. You could use it as a bud vase. You could just set it on, you know, a shelf or in a cabinet and display it. Nobody's going to see those unless they're looking right up close on it. Um, you know, they're not terribly obvious. So it, that's just too beautiful. And I don't know, are these like wisterias or I'm not sure. I'm, I don't know my flowers, which kind of puts a hindrance on things like this. Um, let's see. I want to get this guy listed. He is, I imagine, from probably the 50s or so. And he's a little Florida souvenir piece. He's not marked. So we probably had a Japan sticker would be my guess. I think I also wanted to grab this guy. So he is RS Soul and... This one, again, I cover them like this until I get ready to list them because it keeps the dust out and we live in a pretty dusty area and it also helps keep, you know, the bugs and critters out of there because I'm, I'm just not a fan. Um, so this guy here, he is, looks like he's got some goo or something right there, but I'm going to clean him up. He's a transfer print. Maybe with a little hand paint accent, you know, on it there like that. But uh, beautiful piece. Absolutely beautiful. And there's a look at his mark again. Um, I don't think he had, no, no chips, no cracks. I mean, he could still be used. He's kind of a, a more slender, I guess, water pitcher maybe. Just beautiful piece though. Really beautiful piece. 
Um, I'm thinking, since we're doing those other ones, I'm thinking I'll do this guy too. And I can't remember who makes him off the top of my head, but really cool yellow luster wear. And if you can kind of see in the glaze there, they did like this uh, swirl with the, I guess, pearl iridescence over the yellow glaze. And then this is, of course, 22 karat warranted gold. Uh, don't buy it for the gold content. You'll be sorely disappointed, but cool looking piece. I think he was good. Yeah, he had no chips or cracks or anything, so he could still be used. Back in here, I've got, well, a 19, what was he? 68 GOP Francoma mug. So I've got uh, this guy here. He is a hull piece, but I'll tell you what. How cool is that? Like a big stein. And this is, what is that? That's transfer print. But I think that's a cool, cool mug. There's some dirt in there. So I'm going to list him. Okay, down here are some of the bins that I have. Well, Blippy's in there. I haven't listed him yet. I need to get him up online. Uh, there's lots of different kind of dolls and stuff and handmade crochet pieces in there. Uh, I've actually got one of the original composition Shirley Temples from, oh, I think the 30s. The very first one, I think she's 13 inches tall. Her composition has some crazing to it. I want to say she has a finger or two broken off, but uh, she's otherwise still intact. She's missing her clothes, so she's not, she's definitely not going to sell for what she could, but, you know, she'll still sell. Um, I've got a few records down here, um, an assortment of banks in there, kind of random little teddy bear collections. See, this is the kind of stuff that happens when you buy in estate sales. Again, you, also, you often get a lot of stuff you weren't planning on. Got a little vintage uh, globe there made in Italy and you know it's not antique or anything. It's I don't know if you'd call it a souvenir but it's definitely you know a bookend a decorative piece but it kind of has like old world map on it. I've got kind of an assortment of Royal Copley there. I've got Garfield here his hands glow. Um, however I think he's missing a key. So I'm not able to actually wind him all the way, and I'm not a clock expert. So again, I don't want to destroy him. I'd rather just sell him as is to somebody that knows what they're doing. This lady back here, this horse, and this lady here are all pieces that were made by the professor at KU, the art professor. She told me that uh, she had put on display the one in the back there, and somebody had offered her, I, I guess, several thousand dollars for it, and she turned it down uh, because it was, you know, a personal piece. I believe she modeled this after a teacher of hers that she admired. She's very well done. Uh, she's very artistically done, um, but I don't know what she could sell for. All of these pieces are very heavy. This guy back here is cool. He is, I think, a, a he's a mold, but I want to say he was maybe a California Pottery Company or something like that. Uh, back here are all my kind of like, I don't know, dollhouse furniture. Uh, some of these are ashtrays, like the toilet with the gold seat there and the yellow toilet and that black one. Those are all, I think, technically ashtrays. And speaking of ashtrays, I have kind of an assortment. A lot of them are wrapped up on here um, of different ashtrays and stuff. This is a humidor that I believe is made in Italy, if I remember right. Got kind of a little treasure trove there of Lesterware ones. Let's see, Nippon, different Japan pieces. Up here I've got lots of different types of pictures, a hand-painted. Now he's like, again, I'm not sure that's Holland mold, but something something like that and hand painted. He was really 
really cool, really well done. I think I got him at a thrift store for a couple bucks. In here, we've got, oh, some figurines, Italian ones. Got some Florence in there. Uh, these little things back here are porcelain flowers. They're antique. And they're on like these wires. Uh, some of them have some chipping, but they're beautiful. These are very lightweight. They are, uh, they kind of remind me texture wise of like a chalkware, but they're hollow on the inside. Uh, and they have stickers on the bottom, like made in Italy, something like that. Uh, and this is one of those uh, pin cushion dolls here. This is like a little compote thing made in Japan with its little guy on there. Uh, these are some of my different music boxes. And here are different Native American pottery pieces I have. That another one, I have no clue what to listen for. None of them are, are terribly huge in size. But let me actually show you. I'm not sure who made this. And originally had a piece of masking tape on the bottom that said very old. I imagine it is pretty old. But I'm not sure what it is. I think it's some kind of a scoop, maybe. Um, I'm not sure. Still really cool. It's definitely the larger piece that I have. Several of them are, you know, Acoma. Acoma ones. You know, here's like a wedding vase. Got this guy. Lula Young. Uh, my collection here of different, you know, porcelain dogs and, and stuff. I think he's a California pottery one. They got their jeweled eyes. These are very dusty uh, black gobble poodles. This little terrier guy I bought, and I have a hard time selling him, I'll be honest. I'm not sure who makes them, but he's really well done, and he's he's just stinking cute. And there's, no, that's not Taco Bell Chihuahua. That's just, just a really cool Chihuahua. Over here, I have some different, like, glassware trays. There's some pressed glass, uh, some silver overlay, some different uh, dresser trays, vanity trays. And um, let's see, I want to get this guy listed. He's like a, a snack set where normally I think it has like the little, oh, what is it? Like metal stand that would hold this piece and it like hooks to the side of the main bowl. So like a chip and dip or vegetable and dip set. This is all, I believe, uh, English porcelain. So I think this was, who was this? Oh, Spode. Spode bowls. There's a little, whoops. There's a little Fenton glass down there. I think those are, I have two of those. Some different like turkey platters, serving platters. Um, and then I have some different trays here. I just listed a tray online or on eBay and it's a vintage Disneyland souvenir tray. So there's a quick look around the shop. And I suppose the total transparency part here would be to say that the reason I'm not doing any normal shop along videos right now is because I basically have a whole store here. So my shop along videos for a little bit, at least, will be shopping my own store. And while that may not be quite as entertaining, you guys don't know what all is there except for what I showed you just now, but I think it can still be pretty exciting. I think that people like shop along videos to be able to see what all is out there. Everything that I have here, I have accumulated mostly through estate sale auctions. Uh, there's quite a bit from thrift stores and stuff too. And I would just really like to work on getting a lot of this listed. When I first started this dream of becoming a, a reseller, putting my passion first and following that dream. Life was a little bit different 
and I was still working full time. And a lot of things changed in 2020, specifically the end of 2020. And I was permanently laid off at that time. And for a good many reasons, dragged my feet on the follow through, actually getting it listed and stuff. There was personally just a lot going on uh, at that time. And I look back now and it disappoints me, but I also think things have to have to play out in in the way they're meant to play out sometimes. So again, I know that there's people out there similar to me who maybe have thought about starting a YouTube channel or becoming a reseller. And most of the resellers that I watch or that I follow, although I, I, I love them and that's why I follow them, but at the same time, They've been in the game for quite a while. They're they're on a different level than I am in a lot of ways. So I think it's kind of, I think it's a good thing to show like really from the bottom and to, to see it climb, climb up, to see it all pull together. And it won't happen overnight. And it's a little bit scary, but I can tell you it's a lot scarier to think about not doing it. I'm going to plan on doing some shop along videos here in my store and I'll probably throw in some shop along out and about also going to, you know, different places and stuff, but probably won't purchase a whole lot unless it's actually worth purchasing. And that's got to be pretty a pretty outstanding thing for me to get to bring back and add add to what's going on here already. I hope that you guys will follow my journey, throw criticism my way, throw support my way, but create the community that I know the reseller community is. I always look forward to making videos to put on YouTube, despite the fact that not too many people have seen many of them yet. I plan to continue making videos of just kind of what am I listing videos. If and when I have more of a following, I'm more than happy to start doing sales directly through YouTube. I've actually applied to be a seller on Crazy Lamp Lady Jocelyn's new marketplace, Nick uh, which is hosted on district.net. Um, I do not know Jocelyn. She does not know me. This is not an intended plug for Jocelyn, but if you don't know about it, now you do. Um, I did apply to be a seller on, on her marketplace, and she's got a lot of people that have requested to be a seller, so she's she's doing the best she can, I believe, to work her way through the couple thousand plus applicants, and hopefully soon... I will hear back. But anyways, it was good hanging out with you guys. I feel better getting that all off my chest and explaining why I'm not doing the typical shop with me videos. I will be doing some. I just won't be doing a lot of purchasing for a while. But I enjoy spending time with you guys. And I'll see you on the next one. This is a tiny little checklist of check. This son of a monkey. It's that old line. If you if you build it, they will come. I'm building. They're coming. <laughs> building zone.